In this video, we're going to be talking about angled forces. We're going to work out our problem that includes friction. In our diagram right here, we have a person and a sled system, which is 60 kilograms, that's being pulled with 200 newtons of force along a surface with a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.2. What is the acceleration of the woman? So it sounds like a fairly basic question, but there are definitely a lot of little steps that go into it in order to get to that final solution. Your first step and your most important step by far is to draw your force diagram. So we have force of gravity pulling straight down as usual. We have our normal force pushing up perpendicular from the surface. We have our FT from the rope pulling on the sled woman system. And we have the force of kinetic friction opposing the slide. From there, when we have one of those angled force problems, we want to take a look at which forces are perfectly along our X and Y axes. So if you take a look along the vertical axis, we have Fn and Fg perfectly vertical. So those will fit nicely into our formulas later on. And then in the X direction, we only have the force of kinetic friction that is right along the X axis. Our Ft is right in the middle which means that it has some component that pulls vertically and some component that pulls horizontally. So what you want to do from there is you want to break up your FT into two components. You want to break up the component that pulls horizontally and the component that pulls vertically. And I'm going to call those FTX and FTY. The next thing I usually do is I typically pull my triangle off to the side. I'm going to redraw it. with 30 degrees as my angle from the horizontal, and then 200 newtons is going to be my hypotenuse because that's our FT they gave us in the problem. And then we want to solve for our FTX and FTY to be used a little bit later in the problem. So all I'm gonna do is identify the correct trig functions that are gonna help me find my FTY and FTX, and I'm gonna go ahead and use those and solve for those values. There we go. I have solved for my FTX and FTY. I went ahead and used sine as my first trig function, sine being opposite, our FTY divided by our hypotenuse that allowed me to pull in my FTY into my formula and also to use that 200 for my hypotenuse. I did one quick step of algebra, multiplying 200 to each side, and then I got 100 newtons for FTY. I did the same exact thing for FTX, except I had to use cosine because cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. I did the same algebraic step and I got 173.21 newtons. As you can see, the FTX is a lot larger than the FTY. The reason being is because our angle is 30 degrees above the horizontal. So the halfway point would be 45 degrees, 30 degrees obviously being below 45 degrees. So it is more directed horizontally. Therefore, my FTX should be bigger. All right, now we're ready to set up um, our formulas for the sum of forces in the X direction. And then we can set up our sum of forces in the Y direction. 
So how we do that is we want to make sure we clearly identify which is our positive and negative directions. So in the X direction, I will call FTX my positive direction. And then I'll call my force of kinetic friction to the right, my negative direction. Okay, technically doesn't matter which direction you call positive and negative. I usually like to pick the direction in which it's moving as positive and then the forces that are opposing to be negative. That makes a little bit more sense to me. And the net force or the sum of forces always equals mass times acceleration. Now for our sum of forces in the y direction, I would say um, it's pretty typical to say up is positive and down is negative. So I'm just gonna go with that. We have three forces now. We have our FTY going up, we have our FN going up, and we have our FG going down. So I'm gonna take FN plus FTY and then subtract FG. Now the sum of forces always equals MA, but I can safely call that zero because there is no movement or no acceleration in the vertical direction. Now from there, we have our formulas all set up. Now I'd typically say once you get to this point, it's pretty safe to start plugging in numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug in every single number that I know and just see where that leaves me. So I went ahead and plug in all the numbers I know um, from earlier based on the description of the problem and based on the little bit of work I did with that triangle. And I knew my FTX for my force of friction. They didn't directly give it to me, but I know if I'm working with the force of friction, I can for sure use our force of friction formula, which is the force of friction equals the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And I got a big hint that I was gonna use that because in the problem, they already told me the coefficient of kinetic friction. So I knew the coefficient of kinetic friction was 0.2. I didn't know my Fn at this point, so I went ahead and wrote Fn equals mass times acceleration. I couldn't continue any on anymore from there, so I went ahead and just left that. And then I started working with my sum of forces in the y direction, and it looks like I had everything except my Fn, so I just went ahead and solved for Fn, which actually works out perfectly because I needed to put an Fn value in here so that I could finish solving for my acceleration, which is the final, final thing that we wanted to solve for anyway, so everything works out from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and work out this little bit of math, and then let's see if we can find our acceleration.
All right, so our acceleration came out to 1.26 meters per second squared. All I did is I finished multiplying my coefficient of friction with my normal force and then subtracted that from this number, which left me with 75.61 equals our mass times acceleration. I divided both sides by 60 and I got 1.26 meters per second squared. All right, to sum up all of our steps, your first step and the most important is definitely setting up your diagram each and every time because you can see your formulas are built from those diagrams. Anytime you have an angled force or a force that isn't perfectly vertical or horizontal, you just make sure you break that off into components. You typically create some kind of right triangle from there. And then you do a little bit of trig to solve for extra values that you need. And then once you set up all of your sum of forces in the X and Y direction, you always just basically plug in everything you know. And then from there, you usually kind of like start to see the direction you're headed to find your final solution. And once you've plugged in the numbers, you just carefully crank them out. And then we found our acceleration of 1.26 meters per second squared. So thank you for watching and listening.